Okay, so it's rare I record in the main house, but I've just been up in the loft getting Christmas decorations down, right? We've reached that time of year. A little bit early, but what are you going to do? <laughs> Misses and kids. Um, but yeah, forget the Christmas decorations. I just found this. Now, bear in mind, I've lived in this house, what, almost four years? <laughs> I just found a briefcase, and it looked like it was hidden, because it was like, you know, you have like the insulation, the like fiberglass stuff. And it was all on top of it. I just seen this corner of it. And it was like wedged in as well between like two of the um, supporting roof panels. It took a while to get it out. Um, it's locked, sadly. It looks like some kind of crazy locking mechanism as well. I don't know if it's one of them ones where you need two keys. <laughs> I'm so intrigued. There's definitely something in it. Because it sounds like there's something moving around. So uh, yeah, I'm going to have to break into this somehow because I'm very intrigued. Cue the Pulp Fiction clip. Retro Hi everybody, welcome to this week's Ghetto Vlog. As you can see, there's a lot of parcels that need opening. Let's get straight into it. Uh, let's do it. What a great way to start a vlog. A mountain, a literal mountain of boxes to get through. Uh, we'll open a couple of these now. And uh, before I do that, the plans for this week's vlog. So, the plan, he says, is to have a chilled one. Um, if you're watching this, as it goes live Sunday morning, I'm gonna be at the Doncaster Retro Gaming Market, probably the biggest retro video game market in the country. So all the madness and game hunting craziness that's gonna go along with that will be on Wednesday's video. So, my plan is to just have a little bit of a more chilled week, right? A little bit more low key. Uh, before we get into all that craziness, I'm really looking forward to that. We've got the whole ghetto slime squad going. Theo's going to be there, Kev's going to be there. So, yeah, we'll get into all that obviously later in the week. Um, and I also I think I've got enough stuff here <laughs> to keep me going until then, that's for sure. So, this first one is, uh, yeah, so there's some very nice stuff in here. This came courtesy of a Facebook group. Now, this is a Facebook group where there was loads of like really nice Super Nintendo cardboard. and. It's one of them where like, I, I turn a lot of my social media alerts off. It was a way of me trying to control social media rather than social media controlling me. At least that was the thought process. But the reality is it just means that I miss out on gaming deals. <laughs> so I always get to it late. Um, but yeah, I, I contacted the sort of uh, owner of that group who was selling a lot of his collection. And uh, I just said to him, look, I've missed out on loads of these. But have you got any left? And he sort of showed me... Um, some of the Super Nintendo goodness that he had left and there's a few that I didn't already own so uh, yeah I bought a few there's also a couple of other things in here which I'm going to be saving for uh, a future video that I'm currently working on or working towards so uh, I'm going to open it down here so you don't see anything that I don't want you to see it's very well packaged can I get in yet? here we go we are in Right, okay, let's get rid of all this. There's a lot of bubble wrap. -hoo -hoo -wee. Right, okay, all individually packaged, as I would expect from a high-end collector. Okay, so first one. Oh man, I love this bit of cardboard. What I'm gonna do is take them out of the box protectors so they don't get too much glare when I show them you. On the Super Nintendo, we have got Kawasaki Superbikes. Better known as Superbike Challenge in North America. This is a 1995 Lancor developed racer. Um, it's sort of one of them games that's staged in an unnamed fictional racing series. And yeah, uh, probably not the best racer on the system, but guys, what I needed for the set. And not only that, you know I love green, you know I love colors. Does it get more 90s than a Super Nintendo box in neon green and light blue? I mean, this is why I color coordinated my wall. I didn't want my wall to just be, it's so easy to fall into that trap, isn't it? Of just putting the most expensive games on show. I wanted to like display the artwork. I wanted to display the colors. That's why it's color coordinated. And that's been one of the benefits of doing that. Um, so yeah, this is definitely gonna find a home in the green section. So uh, yeah, um, that will definitely be going on the wall. Also, this isn't in shot. We're gonna have to move this. Mrs. RG is not gonna be very happy with me. There we go. Can you see that? We've got a little Christmas tree in retro ghetto colors. Uh, shout out to RG Jr. They went to one of them paint pop things and um, yeah, they're, they're trying to get this old Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck? <laughs> That's something completely different. They're trying to get this old Scrooge into the Christmas spirit a bit earlier this year. So yeah, that's my uh, little Christmas tree that we've got in here. Let's dig into the next one, shall we? 
Again, take the box protectors off. I do appreciate the box protectors, but you know when they come and they haven't had the film ripped off yet? So they have like a sort of milky, opaque, you can't really see them properly, which is great because now I've got fresh box protectors to pop with my games. And let me tell you, box protectors are much welcome. Um, I calculated once how much I'd spent on box protectors. Thankfully I forgot, because I, I don't even want to remember. <laughs> right, anyway, the next one is Williams Arcade Greatest Hits. This one's a Digital Eclipse developed 1995 video game compilation. It contains emulated Williams arcade games released between 1981 and 1983. It's got Bubbles, Defender, Defender 2, Joust, Robotron 2084, Cine Star, and this is one of the games that I think came out to overwhelming critical praise for its ability to um, give arcade perfect ports. I don't know if those reviews or that sentence is relevant to the PlayStation 1 version of this. You would assume that runs a bit better than the Super Nintendo version, but these aren't the most taxing of games I wouldn't have thought to get in arcade um, perfection. I mean, like I say, these are sort of early 80s games. Uh, it's the shmups on here that I'll be playing for sure. Um, it's one of them ones that you do see every so often, but as with all Super Nintendo cardboard now, it's not cheap. So. Uh, yeah, another one, nice one to be ticking off the list. I'm not going to open all these now. You'll probably be seeing overlay. These are all complete. Uh, they're all in good condition. And um, yeah, another one towards the full set. And there is one more Super Nintendo game in here, I believe. As I say, there is something else in here, something that I'm not going to go into, right? I'm not going to tease you guys with what it is. It's just something that I'm going to be talking about on an upcoming episode. So we'll move them out the way. Uh, right, okay. This is another one. I spoke about this sort of thing last week when we picked up um, Chessmaster from Retro World in Derby. Just games that you do actually see that I haven't yet got towards my full set because they're not as cheap as I'd want them to be. This perfectly falls into that category. You often see this game. I see it at conventions and stuff, like 30, 35 quid, and it's just not one of them games I want to spend that money on. Um, anyway, that is World League Basketball. Again, goes by a different name in North America. They call it NCAA Basketball. Uh, but this one's a 1993 sculptured software developed sports title. It was the first console-based basketball game to utilize a 3D perspective thanks to the Super Nintendo Mode 7. <laughs> yeah, remember that? Um, so, yeah, from the gameplay I've seen, it looks like it might give me a bit of motion sickness. The camera really wants to show off that Mode 7, right? There's a lot of movement. Let's be honest, it's not one I'm going to be in a rush to play, um, but a nice welcomed edition. Three fantastic Super Nintendo editions. I'm not going to say fantastic games because you know I'm not sure that they are, but all in really nice condition. And I've got a saying, right? I've got many sayings at this point, uh, but I've got a saying that any day I can get a complete box Super Nintendo game for my collection is a good day. So we've started off with a triply good day. Uh, yeah, always delighted to add Super Nintendo cardboard. We need to do a new account actually. We are adding Super Nintendo games at a pretty frenetic pace, and I'm very happy about that. Um, you know, you get to that point now where you're well over halfway that there's no such thing anymore as fodder or cheap stuff. It's more, I never see it. It's, you know, I've been collecting Super Nintendo for longer than anything else I've been collecting in this room. We're a good, what, nine years or so into this collection, eight, nine years? Um, so yeah, if I don't own it yet, it's never been available cheap. So yeah, that's where we're at. And so always great to add more to that. I think we'll open one more before we get into some other stuff because we're gonna have to clear some room in here. We can't, yeah, it's gonna be too chaotic with all the uh, video game stuff that we've got to get through. So we'll open one more. Aha, we're gonna open this one. I think you can see, this is from the good folks over at Strictly Limited. Yes, this was like a bundle. Okay, let's just get into it, shall we? Right, okay, so we've got quite a few Switch games here to get into. And uh, we're gonna start with The First Tree. This one's a third person exploration game centered around two parallel stories, a fox trying to find a family and a son reconnecting with his father in Arkansas. As you'll be seeing on screen now, this one's got like a real gorgeous art style to it. Um, I love that kind of almost cell shaded simplified graphics, especially when it's in sort of like a beautiful uh, natural world as this one is with bright colours. So this is one of four games that Strictly Limited have sent me that they sell as a bundle. It's like an indie release bundle, um, which I think is fantastic. It really does shine a light on some of the smaller game developers. Um, and it works out to be fast, fantastic value. I think it's like £77 for all four games, so less than £20 a game. 
And I think that these are going to be somewhat uncommon uh, in the future because they're all numbered releases. This one's 1,099 of 2,000. So if you've got four games that are all limited to 2,000 uh, physical copies, it stands the test of time that some of these will be um, somewhat uncommon uh, going forwards. And, and if you're a Nintendo Switch collector like I am, it's just a great way to add four additional games to your collection. Um, so yeah, that's the first one. Uh, and then let's take a look at... Oh, what's this one? Seventh Sector. Immerse yourself in a captivating steampunk world of 7th Sector. You have to navigate dangers and solve a variety of puzzles to discover this complex story. This is one of them games that has like four different endings, so like the choices that you make do actually ha have an impact on the end game itself. Um, so yeah, that one is 7th Sector. Up next, the one that I probably know the least about actually, uh, and that is, again, limited to 2000 as the all are. This one's 933. Uh, Heaven's Vault. Welcome to Nebula, a strange network of moons linked by rivers in space where robots coexist with humans. Discover lost sites as you play as Aaliyah, accompanied by her robot sidekick. Dive into a branching story, again, where every decision matters. This one's one of the ones of the four which probably looks the least like my kind of game. Um, just the art style and the things I've seen of it. It's not the game that I'd go out to buy individually, but again, uh, as one of the four great value um, another addition and I've saved the best the last I think this is the one that I uh, sort of really wanted this bundle for this is the one that I'm surprised I don't already own because I remember seeing this at launch and thinking yeah that definitely looks like my kind of game uh, and that is Super Life of Pixel Join Pixel as he quests through video game history teleporting across most of video games iconic systems of generations past Enter into a living, playable museum of video game history spanning three decades, 19 consoles, and over 110 levels to beat. Um, yeah. <laughs> You'll be seeing it on screen now. It kind of, to me, it reminds me of games like uh, maybe like Super Meat Boy, uh, Celeste, that kind of thing. It looks to me as one of them things that's like a one screen level kind of game. It's probably one of them games where you're going to die a lot. <laughs> I know I certainly will. But it looks great. I love the way it sort of like goes through those different gaming franchises. Like, I remember seeing um, the trailer for this and there was like levels that looked like Game Boy levels and then like, yeah, it just sort of like progresses and definitely looks like something that I could sit down and play for sure. And this is an early contender uh, for the post credits gameplay on this week's vlog because this is definitely one that I'm itching to play. Uh, so yeah, let me know in the comment section if you play this one because I'm very, very intrigued by it. And speaking of playing games, I'm still playing Days Gone. Uh, I had a great reception to that. A lot of people um, sort of expressed their love for it or said that they really enjoyed the gameplay on last week's vlog and they're going to like delve into that game after seeing that, which I think is great because it's such a fantastic game and if I can spread the positivity of it, then that's a good thing. Uh, I'm still trucking on. Um, still been trying to get here to do an hour or two very late at night. <laughs> More lack of sleep. I try to get towards that platinum. I think I'm over 80% now, so... Yeah, it's not something that's going to happen immediately because I do have to pretty much play through the whole game. And it took me over 24 hours of gameplay to do that last time. Um, but yeah, in terms of like unlocking like all the different things that I've still yet to get, um, yeah, it's probably a few more hours away yet, but thoroughly enjoying it. So yeah, um, shout out to everybody that got in contact with me about Days Gone. Uh, in terms of the rest of this stuff, I think we're going to get to that a little bit later on because there's so much stuff that we've not only added already, Bought that we picked up over the last couple of weeks that I really think we need to do a montage. Montage.
Okay, with the completion of 360 area, that's pretty much everything put away that I can put away for now. Uh, this collector's edition PS3, Switch Kings and PS2, we're going to have to do some work in the room. As you can see, we're running out of space. So we're going to move some things around, then we'll be able to get these put away. Uh, this stuff here is all stuff I'm taking to Doncaster to give away. Uh, this is going to my friend Connor. He's been looking for a Black Label copy of this. Uh, these are going to be given away to get a gang member and friend Craig. This, of course, we picked up last week for Kev. Um, speaking of Kev, uh, I've got to make you guys aware. The fantastic Game Boy display case from the Zippo Lighter display that he showed off on his room tour is being auctioned for charities, doing it for combat stress. An absolutely fantastic charity, guys. Of course, there's going to be a link in the description below. It's the exact one from his game room tour. Um, he's in the process of making another one, um, but he wanted to give this one away and get that money raised for combat stress. Um, so yeah, every £5 you give will enter you into a, a raffle for that. And all the information, of course, will be on that um, Just Giving page. The link will be below. Um, so, yeah, make sure you get involved, guys. Fantastic charity. And shout out to Kev uh, for doing such a fantastic thing. Also, um, I did a giveaway recently from my charity shop episode. There were three games I gave away. I couldn't find the winner of this. So if you won FIFA Football 20, 2004 on the GameCube, let me know because this is still sat here. But I think, guys, I'm going to put my feet up and... Uh, Play a little bit of Days Gone. Okay, so the reason I wanted to share with you guys some more footage from Days Gone is that last week at the end of the vlog, we just took out like a few uh, infestations. But the real draw and the real jaw-dropping moments in this game come from the hordes. So basically when there's hundreds and hundreds of these zombie-like creatures all gathered together. And this is like the biggest challenge in this game. Now, I was down here last night and uh, I'm pretty sure there's a horde in this area. There was loads of zombies. I wasn't equipped. I got out of there. But let's go. Let's tackle it. And uh, yeah, I want to share with you guys exactly what a horde's like. I've made sure that I'm topped up top with my arsenal. So we've got all our bullets and stuff. Right, okay. What's going on here? That's a hostage situation. So this isn't the horde itself. But we'll clear these guys out anyway. So after a bit of searching, I think we found this horde. There's a lot of noises going here. You know when the music changes in the game? <laughs> the music's just changed. I'm getting a grenade ready for these guys. Let's see what's coming. Is there anything coming? Oh, it's coming. <laughs> let's go. Right, let's bring out the big guns. found the horde guys we have found the horde <laughs> we definitely found the horde okay well right, let's light them up no not like that the thing is you can be well in control and think you're doing fine but once they get a hold of you they tear through you quick ah oh, that was a mistake right where's my gun I think they're still coming out, aren't they? Let's get slow down. So things like slow down and stamina I've maxed out. So I'm pretty much as good as it gets in terms of that. Right, we need to get some health going. There we go. Will you reload, man? That was a little bit anticlimactic. <laughs> that was an easier horde, right? By horde standards, that was a pretty easy one, I'll be honest with you. 
Hey! Some of them are like ridiculous. Like unless you sort of like pre-plan and like lay traps and bombs and all that kind of stuff, you'll really struggle. Um, but yeah, I hope it gives you a little taste of uh, what hordes are like. But that was one of the tamer ones, I've got to be honest. Okie dokie, so you'll remember at the start of the vlog, we found this in my loft. And like I say, something in it. <laughs> and I want to know what. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and break into this thing. Here rattling around was that inside wallet also empty. Waste of my time. Waste of our time. Waste of our time. Right, so the day is drawing long, but I want to get through these boxes before tomorrow because I've got a little bit of a game hunt planned. So let's kick it off with. <laughs> well, it saves me opening it, doesn't it? <laughs> Right, okay. <laughs> okay, let's get to the notes, shall we? To RG, here are some parts for your build. Welcome to a world of fun. Sending positive vibes to you and the family. Katie, PS, hope RG Jr. enjoys his goodies. Okay, so I have had a quick look at these already, hence why it fell out the bag. Uh, Katie, uh, aka Katie Bricks and Gaming, is not only an avid video game collector, but also Lego. So two of my passions. And uh, with me having recently discussed the Lego build scenario that we're going to be putting here, uh, Katie very kindly sent me some of her vast uh, Lego arsenal, shall we say. Uh, so these are going to come in valuable for a start, right? These couple of base plates and some really good pieces that are going to be fantastic for the terrain. Everything that we need really to uh, add some details and stuff. The perfect colours, because I'm going to be using like sands and natural colours, greys, that kind of stuff. So yeah, this is some really good stuff in here. And also very kind of Katie to pop something in for RG Jr. as well. And speaking of Katie Bricks and Gaming, let's do a Ghetto Gang room tour. Retro ghetto. Hi Ghetto Gang and welcome to my game room tour. Brick here on Bricks and Gaming. First off, you walk into the 360 wall. Currently setting at 766. Xbox 360 goes out 1202. But if you come in, you've got the wall. Over here we've got my shelf with all big box stuff like Disney Infinity, my Xbox One, Xbox. And then a quick pan over the collection, you see all big box stuff is forward facing. There's rarities in here, not even forward facing. Some nice heavy hitters, got nice cardboard in here. That Gears of War is the still book edition, but that's the back cover of it. The front just has a boring logo, there you got all the artwork. Final Fantasy 13 2 big box, and the Hitman Professional Edition. Oh, of course, you see I've got my brick heads on the, in the corners. Funko Pop, we've got Xbox playing cards, Disney Infinity figurines. We've got the most legendary game of all time. Here we've got a couple more, more to collection. Coming into the ends, so you've got more brick heads turning into cars. The full Spider Man collection. So you've got more big games here. However, it's the main area where I play my game. We've got a 55 inch Samsung TV. There's a TC by Sandbar. First console we come to is the original Xbox. We've got the Duke controller. We've got a Kinect. We've got the smallest Master Chief available. So I can't have a life size one. We've got my Xbox 360 E. The Lego W14 Mercedes pullback. My Xbox One X with the Neon McLaren Formula E and Extreme E cars. We got a Series X. Down here we've got the Wii U and the Switch. Up by Marcus's head. We've got my Series X box. Got the Nintendo Switch. We've got the rest of the 360 collection. Going all the way across. That's where the normal games end. And I'm running out of room majorly. My Kinect subset starts there. All the Kinect games are there. And we've got 
Xbox games. I'm running out of room majorly. I've got plans to bring it, get some more Billy soon. My Xbox One collection. So you've got cardboard sleeves. I'll get the cardboard where I can. There's a lot of sealed games in that collection. Which I picked up too, just need to get around to playing. There's awesome Gears of War 3 standee. I picked up from Mr. RG, which is lovely. He, he just sits there and watches you play the whole time. And here's my very small, very selected um, non Microsoft games. So we've got PS2, Wii, Wii U, Switch, and PS1. All games are here are what I want to play. So they're not filler for me, they're all killer. We've got my Series X collection, all, all the Xbox ones. And there's some more Disney Infinity figures. Let's go to the studio. We've got my Lego City. Right, so we're into the studio. We've got my Lego City. Quick overview of the city. We've got Masonary Towers, which I'll slowly work on. We've got Assembly Square and Police Station, which are retired. We've got Doctor Strange's Central Center, which will retire at the end of 2024. Construction site for a museum coming soon. You've got all the cars, got different scenes going on. We've got outside food court, different food trucks, got the park. Got this very nice beach going, scene going on. Tack of the giant octopus. Up in my race platform, room for expansion in the city. You've got a couple of supercars and a burger truck. And over to the battle station, which is a full monitor setup. We've got my three main monitors for playing games, doing all fun and crazy stuff. We've got monitor I can view Discord on or emulate old games on. We've got the Undead Nightmare poster. And underneath the desk, we have got a PlayStation 2 with space for an N64 and GameCube to go soon. Now that PlayStation 2 is plugged up to the TV, so I can play retro games in the room as well. That's my retro cooler. If you guys enjoyed my game room, let us know. And I'll pass this back over to Mr. Ghetto. Sim, shout out to Katie for sharing her fantastic room with us all, man. I wish I had the room to build a Lego city like that, or have that three screen set up. Yeah, thanks a lot. Much appreciated. Of course, if you do want to keep abreast of Katie's journey for the full 360 set, that's some undertaking. And obviously the expansion of the Lego City, then yeah, there will be a link below to her channel. Go and support. But that leaves us with just one parcel left and it's a big one. Right, okay. Get rid of that. It's uh, it's the next morning. It's been a mad few hours. Uh, both kids are ill. Off school, off nursery. So it's all hands on deck. Um, but yeah, this box has cheered me up no end. As you can see, I've just got rid of the box. A lot of this was individually packaged. So I would have been sat here fiddling around with bubble wrap for hours. Uh, it was all expertly packaged. But I've unboxed it all and I want to show you guys everything. Um, so this has come from my friend Carl. He has sent a note. Hi Caleb, I hope this finds you well. Just a small token of appreciation for all your work and love you put into the channel. Peels, please feel free to do with this as you please. Uh, sorry it took so long. Much love to you and yours, Carl. P.S. Just added a couple of extras. So basically, this is a deal that me and Carl have been going backwards and forwards with for months now. Uh, so yeah, um, Carl had a huge collection and he traded a lot of it was predominantly Xbox 360 to CX. I think he did it at the right time, right? He got well over a thousand pound in trading. Uh, with the CX prices having gone through the roof in recent months. He said basically there was a lot of stuff that CX just didn't give enough money for, or it was sealed or it had sleeve covers and st stuff like that. He didn't want to trade to CX for the sort of standard price that they give, or the stuff's just not on the system. Um, so this was something, as I say, that we were going backwards and forwards about. But Carl being the legend that he is, threw in some additionals that I wasn't aware of, um, including a couple of Switch games, one of which I actually nearly bought on Amazon. So the first one is uh, Halloween and Evil Dead. So this is Retro Realms double feature, Halloween and Ash vs Evil Dead. Don't know much about this one. You guys will have to let me know in the comment section. But looking at it, on the back it looks like an 8-bit or 16-bit platformer. That's what it looks like to me and if that is the case... <laughs> Yeah, uh, delighted with that. He knows me well. But this is the one that I almost bought. I was looking at this to see if there was like Black Friday deals going on. I saw this on a recent pickups video. Pepper Grinder. This one looks fantastic. This is like a, a platformer um, with like really unique elements of gameplay where you utilize what is like a hook, I think. And you can kind of like go through um, different uh, parts of the level to get to the next part. I'm not explaining it very well. You'll be seeing it for yourselves on screen now, right? But yeah, like I can say this is one that I was probably going to pull the trigger on anyway. So massive shout out to Cole. He's obviously got good taste and he knows me well. So yeah, uh, as well as that, he also sent some gifts for the kiddies, some Lego. And he's hooked me up with some base plates uh, for my Lego city shelf that we're going to be growing. I say city, it's not going to be so much a city as a... 
a war zone. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're going to be a massive help. These are huge, man. I think this is like the 48 by 48, the biggest one you can get. Might be too big for my shelf, but I'm happy to cut it uh, with a Stanley knife. Uh, whatever works in terms of getting it onto one Billy bookcase. I'm going to start looking on Google to see if there's many other like Billy bookcase builds out there. I'm sure there will be. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, there's also these. Uh, so at one point in time, I was inundated, right, with mint chocolate. And uh, I ain't going to lie, I've eaten most of it. <laughs> And uh, to be honest, after the night I've had, the uh, lack of sleep, so if I look older and bolder than ever, I'm on about two hours sleep, right? Um, these, with a cup of tea, are going to be much needed once I've gone through all this stuff, let me tell you. So yeah, massive shout out to you, my friend. Um, but yeah, now this is the stuff, as I say, that I was aware of. So there's loads of Xbox 360 stuff here. Just special editions, collector stuff. A lot of this is like condition upgrades and things like that for me. Some of this stuff I don't own. This first one was, yeah, one I really wanted for my collection because I have this on the PlayStation 3. Um, but i kind of going through that phase of getting rid of a lot of PS3 collector's editions and replacing them with Xbox 360. This was just one that I wanted. And uh, this is a nice sealed copy as well. And that is uh, Street Fighter X Tekken. This comes with like a little arcade that you can like build yourself and... Yeah, I won't need to open this because I do own the game uh, on other systems. So this will just be a nice sealed one for the 360 area. And I don't know what we're doing about that 360 area. We might have to change that bottom piece that we added last week behind the sofa that's got Xbox One in it currently. There's so many Xbox 360 games that I'm adding right here, plus more that I want. Yeah, we're going to have to figure something out. But that is uh, something that I was very much looking for. So that's great. Um, right, let's get into this then. We've got a lot of sleeve covers here. Um, again, we've got Deadfall Adventures. Mine was battered. I got mine from CEX. Uh, I'd played the CEX lottery on Deadfall Adventures and they sent it in this, which was great, but it was, it was very much beaten up. So uh, yeah, a nice clean addition is much welcomed. Uh, and then we get to sleeve covers, as I say. So we've got Fable Anniversary, Ace Combat Assault Horizon Limited Edition, Doom 3, BFG edition, and a not very common one, a Murder City of Gangsters. Some of these guys will be future giveaways, uh, some of these I'll be giving away to Ghetto Gang members. Right, okay. Um, and then there's some sealed stuff, so this is all sealed. Uh, so we've got Nia, so these are obviously condition upgrades. Call of Duty Ghosts. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. This is an interesting one. Italian exclusive, Snipers. Uh, they don't stock this at CEX. Um, I think because it was, you know, a European only release. Not the best first person shooter. I actually have this sealed already, but mine's broken. I bought mine sealed but broken at the top. So another condition upgrade. Uh, Truck Racer, not one that I know too much about. And Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. So they're all sealed, so obviously they'll be getting added to the 360 area. Um, and then we'll get into we'll get into Steelbooks, I think. There's some Steelbooks here. We've got Batman Arkham City. There's various different uh, iterations of this. I spoke about it on the channel before. This is the Catwoman variant. I did say I wasn't going for the variants, but I think at this point I already own three. So it's another one of them subsets that just seems to be happening on its own. Uh, we've got... Dead Island Riptide, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, Aliens vs Predator, uh, I'm going to save that one because that's uh, something I've never seen before, um, this is one that I see quite often in CEX and I've been tempted to buy it but so many times I've thought oh, it's cool but I don't have the space but I think I'm just going to have to get over the 360 space thing now, we're just going to have to figure it out, I think like I say we're going to have to extend that bit behind the sofa. Maybe put my collector's editions in there or something. We'll look at that potentially on next week's vlog. But yeah, this is the survival edition of the reboot of Tomb Raider. I've never played a modern Tomb Raider. Short of just turning it on and having 10 minutes just to see what they're about. I've never really sat down with the Tomb Raider since the very early PlayStation 1 games. So yeah, let me know in the comments where the best Tomb Raider to jump into is after the first sort of, you know, three uh, that came out on the PlayStation 1. I know there was four releases, but one, two, and three. Uh, Batman Arkham Asylum, the Game of Year edition with the lenticular sleeve. I think, is this the one that came with the poster? Or the glasses? Was it glasses? Yes! 
So I've been needing these. Yes. These are all in great condition. I should have known. So I've been looking for these. These are the 3D glasses that should come with that edition. Yeah, man. It's crazy, isn't it? How happy uh, an almost 40 year old man can be at some cardboard 3D glasses. But yeah, I'm delighted to have those. It's just the sort of thing you kind of think, well, I'm never going to find them. So when you do, yeah, love that. Um, and then we've got Just Cause 2 Limited Edition. Uh, Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. I do enjoy my 2D fighters. Um, this is just a series I've never put much time into. Speaking of 2D fighters, the artwork on this one is absolutely beautiful. And that is King of Fighters 13. This usually comes with a poster. Yeah, really nice poster in here. It's got all like, the different movesets on for the characters and stuff. This is a game that I always intended to put some time into. It's perfect for my kiosk, but life, right? Life. One day. I live on that one day. Uh, Devil May Cry HD Collection. This is one that I think, again, I owned on the PlayStation 3. Um, and I'm with me focusing on 360, not PS3. I'm happy to switch out the better titles, the ones that I'd rather, you know, that one day I want to play. Um, so, yeah, uh, happy with that. And that brings me to this one. I mean, to some people, this probably wouldn't be the most exciting game of this fantastic bunch. Um, but I've never seen this before. So the Kane and Lynch series on Xbox 360, they come with many weird and wonderful um, sleeve covers. I think pretty much all of them came with some sort of variant or another. Uh, there's some real nice ones in there as well, but I don't remember ever seeing this one. So this is Kane and Lynch Dead Men, but I've never seen this sleeve cover before. Really nice artwork on that. Yeah, delighted with that. And uh, yeah, just fantastic. Like I say, this is something that we've been discussing for many, many weeks, if not months now. Um, but yeah, far too generous uh, with these additional extras that I had no idea about these Switch games. Uh, he did tell me he's focusing on Nintendo Switch now, so uh, yeah, I'm going to have to see if there's anything that he needs for my collection. Return the kindness, and uh, we'll pass out the kindness as well. We'll keep that generosity going. Uh, a couple of these, as I say, are going to be condition upgrades, so some of these will be going out to Discord members. We'll also be doing some giveaways uh, in the next week or two on the vlogs, especially with some of these nice uh, sleep cover variants, which I already own. So yeah, once again, huge shout out to Carl. Hopefully, next time you see me, I'm going to be on a game hunt. It kind of all depends, right? Because yeah... Like I say, I've got two kids that I need to go and look after, but um, I'm hoping at some point uh, I'll be able to nip out and uh, do a little game hunt because I've got something planned. So, yeah, hopefully I'll see you in a bit. I may be covered in the snot of two young children, but as you can see, I've made it out. So, yeah, out for a couple of hours, getting some much needed fresh air in the system and we are going to hit up Kirkby Sales and Exchange. Um, there's something here I've got on layaway. I've also got a couple of bits that I want to trade into these guys and there's nowhere better in my opinion to trade goods in. Like I often say, they give fantastic prices for your goods and fantastic items for the goods that you buy. So win-win, right? So uh, yeah, I'm in a very snowy Kirkby in Ashfield. Uh, we're going to fly here, hopefully get to CX after. Obviously, I don't want to be out all day. We need to get back to the kids. Um, but yeah, that's the plan. Let's go. Hey, oh, could have done with this last week. Saw Wednesday's video, you know, I've got a couple of these recently, and I don't know, do I need to delve into the full set? I think I'll just as and when it for now.
Right, this is the part where I tell you how fantastic Kirkby Sales and Exchange is. It's fantastic. This is the part where I tell you I picked up some really nice stuff. I picked up some really nice stuff. And this is the part where I tell you that we're going to go back to the 3.0 and take a look. Well, we're not. We're going to break with tradition. We've done a lot of filming in the 3.0 this week. Um, so let's just do the pickups here in the car park, shall we? Um, so the first one... Xbox 360 title, I've never seen it. Now, pretty much all of this series, the games have become uncommon, quite sought after. This one is actually in stock at CX. I think there's four copies in the system. At one point there wasn't, but um, there's definitely a bit an increase in stock levels at CX with 360 in recent times. I think because the prices have all gone up, I think people got to that point where they started trading stuff in, and I think the hype's dying down maybe a little bit. Um, but anyway, that is Big Game Hunter 2012. Um, so I already have quite a few of these, um, you know, Alaska's Dangerous Hunts, Cabela's Dangerous Hunts, you know, there's various different versions, uh, I own quite a few of them, it'd be a nice subset to have, because like I say, they're all somewhat uncommon titles, um, so yeah, this was like £12, I think it's like £18 at CEX, um, but yeah, always get fantastic prices at Kirkby Sales and Exchange, and uh, really happy to be adding one that, like I say, you just don't really ever see, and then picked up a Switch game. So you'll see on the footage, I um, was going through a big stack of Switch games. Now they're predominantly um, sort of like limited run style companies. I knew I wanted to buy one, but I just wasn't sure which one. Uh, this one's not particularly uncommon. You can buy this online. This is the NIS America release, but I think it did actually get a wider release, but it's a schmup. I like schmups. Uh, and that is R-Type Final 2. And as you can see, it's still sealed. I'm very much a glutton for punishment. I seem to buy all the sort of R-type games, but I'm terrible at them. Um, you know, shops are a real mixed bag for me in terms of like ones that I'm good at and ones I'm not. I love them, but I'm so poor when it comes to R-type. Like, yeah, I own so many different variants of R-type. Um, yeah, they keep making R-type final games, right? So yeah, clearly they're not final. I think there's a third one been released now, but this was like a 2021 release, I think. Um, so yeah, just a nice addition to my Switch collection, R-type final two and then the final pickup is the one that i referenced before we went in this was the one that i sort of already had they put this on their facebook page and i said oh can you keep a copy of this aside for me they had quite a few of these in i think their supplier got them for them really cheap and uh, it's one i wanted anyway and when i saw the price this was 25 pounds i thought yeah this, this is definitely something that a series i need to play <sighs> wish me luck but also it fits into my PS4 collecting, which is like big box stuff, sleeve covers, that kind of thing. Um, but that is, again, sealed the Dark Souls trilogy. So if we read on the back, it says the complete Dark Souls series in one three disc collection, including Dark Souls Remastered, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of First Sin, Dark Souls 3, The Fire Fades, all DLC content from all three games, crucially, and all original soundtracks. So there's a lot here for your money, right? There's a lot of bang for your 25 bucks, that's for sure. So yeah, as always, a massive shout out to Nina, a massive shout out to the staff at Kirby Sales and Exchange. I come here quite a lot, which is why I didn't do like a big sort of shop tour, because if you watch the vlogs, you'll have seen it many times before, right? I love coming here. And uh, yeah, as always, it never let me down. Three fantastic additions, I think, to my collection. Um, as always, I go from here to the CEX, sort of in Ashfield CEX. Um, so yeah, we're going to fly there now. I've got a couple of bits that I want to trade in. We'll see what's on the shelves and then we'll get back to the 3.0. Let's go. As you can all see, I am back in the 3.0. So the CEX trip, I did pick up something. I bought a nice collector's edition, but I'm saving that for the next pickups video with Kev. That's right, we've got plans to do it again. I had such a great reception and both myself and Kev really enjoyed that. So what we're thinking about doing is a Christmas special. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you're looking forward to. Me and Kev are gonna get together, do another pickups video. Yeah, and that's gonna form 
what will probably be the final episode before Christmas. So I'm starting to put a few things away that I pick up that I want to save for that video. And that's also when Kev's going to announce the winner of the Game Boy display giveaway. So remember, there will be a link in the description below for that one. Um, but aside from that, I've got to give a massive shout out to the staff. I always enjoy that CEX. And I was just talking to the girl at work there, and I almost bought uh, Lego City Undercover. Um, partly for the sleeve, don't get me wrong, but also because of all the Lego games, that's the one that I hear the most positive things about, and that's the one that I actually really want to play. I've been told that it's like GTA, but, you know, kids version, so it's always intrigued me. Um, and I was talking to her about it, and I said, oh, I was going to buy it, but I only wanted it for the sleeve cover. And she said, we'll just have the sleeve cover then. Someone will still buy it without it here. And she let me have it for free. So massive shout out to the lady on the checkout that let me have that. Um, yeah, <laughs> we seem to be in full swing now for this uh, Lego uh, sleeve cover set. I'm quite happy to just pick up the sleeves on their own simply because the games aren't particularly cheap. A lot of the games are like 10 and 12 pounds still. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to just pick these up and then as and when the games come down in price, I'll add them to it. The couple that I do already have the games for are on Xbox One, but to be honest, I'd rather go down the PS4 route as well. So over time, we'll get all of these for PS4. There you go. I said it out loud. We're going to collect them. Um, but I mean, I said earlier on in the vlog, I was going to have a chilled week, but... <laughs> what a ridiculous pile of stuff to have added from just one vlog. Um, every time I think I've got my game room in order... Something like this happens, right? Genuine first world problems, right? Obviously, it's a great problem to have. And I enjoy the point it away. People always say to me, you need a bigger room. But yeah, we're fine, man. I enjoy sort of like displaying things and making the best of the space that I have. And I think next week's vlog is going to be a lot of putting stuff away because no doubt we're going to be adding more to that pile at Doncaster Retro Game Market. So if you're watching this Sunday morning, that's where I'm going to be. So next week's footage will be coming to you from the fantastic Doncaster Market. The whole squad's going. I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, I think that's going to pretty much do it for this week's Ghetto Vlog. If you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. If you want to support further, get involved with the Discord, the Ghetto Gang game rooms, and everything else that we've got going on with the Ghetto Gang, there will be a link in the description below to join. But yeah, man, as always, have a fantastic weekend. Play your games. Keep it retro. I'll see you in a bit. Take care. Post credits. Lock into the retro ghetto. Come and have a look around the ghetto. We got Sonic and Staples set. Lock into the retro ghetto. Right, so in terms of this week's gameplay footage, I mean, we're spoiled for choice, aren't we? But I think I'm going to stick to the original. This is tempting because I thought this looked great. Um,. But yeah, this was my first thought. Super Life of Pixel. Let's go for it. Simple enough. The volume down a little bit. There we go. Oh, right, let's go for it. Select game system. Okay, ZX B1, Atari 2600, Spectrum. Ah, so obviously you have to unlock the later consoles. Um, I never really had any of these, if I'm being honest. Commodore 64 was my first, so let's go ZX Spectrum. Choose your level. Oh, might as well start with level one, don't we, guys? Let's go. Oh, this is cool. I love this. So it genuinely is like a playable video game library, like a history. All that information. Obviously, I'm not going to make you guys read it now. And it was always going to be one of them games you're going to die a lot on, that's for sure. There's time in the top right corner as well. I don't know if that's relevant. Ah. 
Oh. Oh no. Ah! No! Right, how do we get... Oh! Oh, I've got to be careful of spikes up there. Yes! Okay. Okay! We're getting somewhere. No! Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, this is like uh, one of those sort of like Super Meat Boy games where it's gonna kill you. It's gonna find any way to kill you. Oh man. Right. You really have to learn. Ah! You got to learn every level. Right. Get out of my way. Oh, as if! Don't. Jesus, there's no like, there's no small jump either. It doesn't matter how lightly you press it, you're going full Duncan Edwards triple jump. Right, let's go for it. Oh. Right, I'm guessing the water kills you. Oh my days. Oof. Exit. Do we want the exit? We don't want it. Ah. No, the ex right, so that's not open yet. Ah! How am I supposed? Wow, <laughs> this game is cruel, man. It's got me making jumps I can't even see. Ah, oh, no! No! Not back to the start. No! No, 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 no! Why is it not? I used to be able to do this every time! How come all of a sudden I can't make that jump? I still can't make that jump though! Don't understand, that jump was so easy before. Right. No! I'm just, I could scream. This is level one! This is level one! You can't do that! How? Oh my gosh. It's like there's no control. Oh, honestly. I mean, why? Why? Right. I don't even know how to begin to do this jump without dying. Right, okay, so you have to miss out that one. Right, I'm with it now. Take your time, take your time, come on. I've got to learn how to play this kind of game. Come on, you can do this. That's better. That's better. Right, okay. Yes. 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 Yes! The door is open. Let's go! Come on, keep it together. Yes! 23 lives lost on level one! One percent! Oh my gosh, I feel like I've aged in one level. I'm not gonna lie though, there's a bit of me that enjoyed it. <laughs> right, let's try another level. One more. Ah, this looks difficult. Oh no. That's it, that's it. And then just, yes, yes. Look, I can't even, oh my 
goodness. I don't know if I can jump on these bats. I'm assuming you'll learn the colours, right? I'm guessing yellow things all will react the same, but I don't... I don't know how to approach this. Yes! Have it! Right, the spikes up there. Let's let them fall down. Yes! What is that? A bubble? Okay. Oh, the bubbles pop. Makes sense. Do I get another bubble? No, no more bubbles. Okay, lovely. So it's a small window to get past them spikes. Yeah, man, we'll bubble it. Ah! No! How did I fall in? Put me on the edge of the screen and expect me not to fall. Ah! Oh, you stupid! Them go. Then we're going to bubble it. Let's go. Oh, okay, okay. We'll have it. I don't know what's the other side of this screen. That's fair, isn't it? Nice one. Yes. What on earth? Ah! Oh Lord, give me strength. Yeah. Okay. Get that. Wait there. Yes. This time. I mean, how fast does that move? I mean, it's got to be. Ah! God, no! Feel like that meme from the office. No, God, no! <laughs> Oh my days, I have not had enough sleep for this. Oh, come off it. I'm determined to finish this level. Ah, <sighs> oh, we might be defeated here, guys. I can't. If it's not, ah, oh, it's impossible. Stupid, stupid game. You doing this? Come on. No. Ah, oh, that I can't. I can't. I'm done. <laughs> so done. I'm so done. I am so done. I've been defeated. <laughs> I couldn't clear the second level. I'm throwing a challenge at anybody that's got this game, any other YouTubers, let me know if you can do this game. I'm throwing a challenge in particular to Ross Bar Ha Ha. You seem like the kind of guy that would get kicks from beating a game like this. Um, you do like rubbish games to be fair and I certainly wouldn't say it's a rubbish game it's an enjoyable one it's one of those ones that I want to progress with I want to see the more advanced levels I want to see the play PS1 graphics the SNES graphics but pff, not much chance of me getting there <laughs> guys appreciate you watching thank you a little bit